Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, the political dragon here in our offices in the Bronx. It is now February 7th, uh, about 12 in the morning, and I wanted to go over something that I saw earlier in the day. It is a poll that we saw from YouGov talking about memes, talking about AI, and the ever-dreaded quote, misinformation, end quote, and how that is affecting the 2024 election, if at all. Now, I think this is a pretty interesting poll. You can see it here, and it is interesting. There's a lot of information here I think will be useful to give us an idea of where the 2024 election is going, where the fortification of the 2024 election will be going. But I think it's also important to understand, I don't think this is the real problem. I think this is Facebook under its parent company, Meta. This is their attempt to get the temperature of the public. How does the public feel about the censorship that Facebook regularly employs? And I think other social media companies will be looking at this poll as well to try and get a gauge of what can they get away with as they try to fortify 2024 in much the same manner as they did in 2020. Except people know what they did last time. They know that there's been a lot more censorship under the Biden-Harris administration, and so people are paying attention. Not only do I believe that, but just last week we were talking about this on Larry Sharp's program, the Larry Sharp Club. Uh, we were, it was nine o'clock on a Monday, and we were speaking about this very same issue, the question of AI. How will that affect the election in 2024? And surprisingly, well, surprising to some, I would imagine, um, many of the guests were actually pointing out it's not that we're going to see fake videos, fake images, uh, fake messages. These are things that have been happening for years. None of this is new. As long as there have been photographs, as long as there has been any kind of video recording equipment, there have been fake messages that people have seen during elections. No, what we're seeing different this year, and I think the thing to watch out for, as one of my co-hosts had mentioned at the time, was that we have to watch out for people denying the truth, people trying to imply that what was the truth is now false, to say that, yes, they did, in fact, Joe Biden did, in fact, say that if you if you don't vote Democrat, then you're not black. Or when Joe Biden went to CNN, the town hall, and said that blacks and Hispanics were too dumb to be able to transverse the internet to be able to look at election polling sites and be able to go vote, they'll say, oh, that's not real. Yes, it was. It happened. CNN nationally televised the town hall. It happened in 2022. But again, this is the kind of stuff that's going to be denied and people will claim that it's AI or fake, but yet it is the truth. So I thought that was kind of interesting, um, and I do invite you to check out that conversation that we had, either the section on AI or the entire conversation we had with Larry Sharp. You'll be able to see the link in the description to go check it out for yourself. But the question at hand here is the poll that happened today, where YouGov is saying, well, let's only look at the idea that AI will create a fake video or a fake image, a meme, perhaps, about the 2024 election, and it will be called misinformation. Okay, and how fearful are the public about that? So the first question that we see in this poll is, have you ever seen a political meme? I mean, that's what the poll is truly or should be about. Have you seen a political meme? Instead, they're asking a slightly different question. Have you seen a meme, a fake video uh, or post about the 2024 election? Well, the answer to that to almost everyone in America is yes. We've been seeing those memes about Donald Trump since 2020. <laughs> but 
now they're specifically worried about Joe Biden and images of Joe Biden, not Donald Trump. They haven't asked this question about misinformation or fake video posts about Donald Trump, which we've seen many of. No, no. Now they're saying it about Joe Biden. So this tells us immediately this poll is about protecting Joe Biden, about protecting Democrats, not about being fair or actually addressing the question of AI and its influence in social media. So the second question in that poll just goes to the fact that there was a video. It appeared on Facebook. The video was edited. It wasn't AI. It wasn't manipulated by artificial intelligence. No, it was just someone editing selectively information about Joe Biden to get a different answer. Now, this isn't new. We've seen this done by CNN, by MSNBC, in terms of speeches given by many Republicans, by Donald Trump. We've seen them edit selectively to get an outcome that they want. And in fact, this is the basis of modern news, the 24 news cycle. You could say the same thing is being done every time that they take a three hour event and summarize it into a series of five, five words, not necessarily all from the same sentence or the same paragraph to try and convey an entire event. It's very interesting the way that YouGov is wording this and the message they're trying to get across to the public. Even though the news media has selectively edited events, if you as a public citizen do the same thing to get to the same outcome, to lead the viewer to a particular mindset, well, it's bad when the individual does it, when national news media does it, it's perfectly okay. I find that very interesting. So, and this is somewhat of Meta trying to cover their own tracks. They allowed the video to exist because it was human editing, not a machine or artificial intelligence doing it. So they said that didn't violate their terms of service. Mind you, almost nobody heard about this. Nobody cares. The public really doesn't care. This is something that politicians are very concerned about. This is something that political parties are concerned about. And therefore, social media companies are concerned about it to see what they can and cannot get away with as they fortify the 2024 election. But the general public didn't know and didn't care. They've already, I think, mostly made up their minds about how they're going to vote in 2024. And an extra video showing Joe Biden stumbling, having difficulty speaking, um, we've already seen him do this live multiple times all around the world and in the United States. An extra video showing it isn't going to change your opinion at this point. And this is the reason why I think the poll is actually created by Meta, Facebook themselves, because now they're asking about the oversight board and their decision. So basically, Facebook allowed a video that was manipulated and to negatively portray Joe Biden to exist on their website. Fine, that's freedom of speech. But the oversight board said, you know, it didn't violate their terms of service, so they allowed it to be there. And now here comes Meta, Facebook, saying, do you agree? Are you upset with our oversight board that we allowed Joe Biden to be mocked, to be ridiculed, to be misunderstood, just like they allow that to happen for Donald Trump for the last three years at least. And again, I like to remind people, no one knew this happened. No one cared. So to ask people, are, should this have been removed, really is kind of ridiculous. If you were so concerned about it, if it was so important, people would have already had an outrage about it. And this is definitely a culture and climate of outrage over anything and everything instantaneously. No one cared. So Facebook, after sponsoring these first couple of questions in the poll, then goes on to ask, and again, I'm assuming it's Facebook here, but they go on to ask, okay, how do you feel about memes and videos, ridiculing parodies and such? How do you feel about that? On social media should there be a label that's attached to a post mind you they already do this Facebook has already been doing this 
um, just like we've seen on other social media, when they don't like a certain subject. You see that on YouTube. If someone's talking about medical data in particular, 2020 and the lockdowns, the jab, then they always like to put in their little disclaimer, pushing the approved messaging on that. If people are talking about elections, and in particular, if anything even sounds hints like it could be referring to the 2020 election, they put up their little disclaimer affirming the approved messaging. We see that on Facebook all the time. They will blur out images. They will put in their own little community chat text and label the posts however they feel, regardless of the actual context, regardless of the information itself, they want to put in their approved messaging to lead you away from whatever may be there. And they do this to memes and have been doing this to memes on a regular basis, almost always to a more conservative or right-leaning post and video than on the left. And essentially the question is, how much censorship can social media companies get away with before people get upset? That's the purpose of this question. It's allowing the social media companies to know in fortifying the 2024 election, how much can they manipulate the free speech of individuals on their platform before people push back and say, no, you've gone too far. How many people will allow it? How many people will keep their heads down and say, it's perfectly fine. Go ahead and just rip up whatever someone else has done, the content they have created. Now, I'm going to get into this a little bit more a little bit later in this video. But remember, they're talking about anything they want to classify as misinformation, whether it's about the election, about a particular candidate, whether it's about a p particular political position. If they don't like it, they want the ability to say, we don't agree with that answer. That's not the approved message coming from the mainstream media, coming from the government or political agencies. And so you are a bad person. That's what they want the right to do, whether they're talking about entertainment, whether they're talking about parody, whether they're talking about fiction, whether they're talking about political commentary, analysis, or anything else. The poll goes on to try and understand where's the level of sensitivity on most people. Is it the image that's more sensitive or is it the wording that's more sensitive? What is it that makes you get that trigger that says, ah, this needs to be removed. This hit my feelings enough that I want to react. Is it the image? Is it the words? What's your trigger and what's the trigger that's going to allow them the most amount of censorship in attacking your free speech. And here is the big question in the poll, one of the big ones. And this is literally social media companies asking how much censorship can they get away with? They have literally said, okay, we don't like certain types of content. Should we remove it? Will you back us for taking away people's voices. If the social media giants do not do not believe that it will lead you to vote for Joe Biden and Democrats in the 2024 election, can they punish the content creator and those who receive or distribute that content? Can they get away with censorship? Can they destroy the First Amendment? That's what this question, I believe, is truly about. This is the core of that question. I think this question is also very important when we look at what they then went on to say. Do they have to tell you the reason why they want to punish the content creator? Do they want to let you know that they have violated the terms of service? Now, we recently showed an example of what this kind of looks like over on YouTube, where YouTube decided to strike, try to remove a video, a live stream that we had done because of the last three seconds. In a three hour live stream, the last three seconds, they made a claim, oh, there's a firearm when there wasn't a firearm on the screen. And they said that it violated one of their terms of service, except they made up the rule, the guideline that they wanted to strike the video with, because if you actually went to their guidelines, if you actually looked at their rules, well, no, no violation was made. So they completely fabricated everything to 
remove content that wasn't approved. They didn't like what we were saying about the Second Amendment, what we were saying about freedom and the constitutionality of many of the actions of the Biden-Harris administration. And so they wanted to remove the whole thing and they just made up rules and regulations. And here they are asking in a poll, do they have to actually give you a reason? Do they have to provide even the impression of an actual rule before they try to take away your First Amendment right to have a conversation, to express your views, whether that be entertainment, parody or anything else? You have a right to speak the way you want to speak, to say what you want to say, and they want the right to take that away from you. And this is what this question, I believe, is really about. The next question, I think, is one of the funniest questions we've ever seen in a poll. Do you trust social media companies? People don't trust news media companies that have been around for decades, for a century. They don't trust the New York Times any more than they trust MSNBC than they do Fox News. People don't trust the mainstream news media. We have seen them lie too often. We have seen NBC, CBS, the New York Times have reporters that make up stories, that plagiarize stories, that make up sources over and over again. And we've seen it in story after story. We've seen them denied the truth for years on end only to be proven incorrect. So it's kind of funny for them to say, well, do you trust social media companies? No, no, I don't. Again, I point out, they're not honest. They haven't been honest, but they want us to believe they are, that they're playing fairly and above board when they're not, especially during an election year when they have a goal in mind just like they did in 2020 when they didn't tell you that they had a goal in mind that they were censoring to try and lead people to vote one specific way. And it was only in 2022 when Newsweek revealed the shadow cabal that was fortifying the election. Only then did the public find out what they had done. It was complete deception and manipulation that now they're trying to justify that manipulation and deception. And in the next question in this YouGov poll, they then decide to actually talk about the 2024 election, which everything in this poll has been talking about, the 2024 presidential election. This is all about Joe Biden. And they're trying to find out, well, how much uh, censorship, and how much manipulation is okay. They want to find out, are you still susceptible to memes and to videos? Have you made up your mind on who you're going to vote for? This is what the question is really about. Have you already made up your mind about whether you're going to vote for Joe Biden, President Trump, or RFK? Have you made a final decision there? And if you haven't, well, that means they can manipulate you. That's what the whole fortification is about. And if it isn't, well, they have to use other more dramatic means, kind of like Colorado and Maine, where they've removed President Trump from the ballot or what we've seen by the Democratic National Committee in New Hampshire when they invalidated and nullified the voters, even though they were voting Democrat and they voted for Joe Biden. Invalid doesn't matter, nullified. So they want to see exactly where they can go with this. Still concerned about the fortification of 2024, they're looking, we see these social media companies trying to check how effective has their fortification been? Have they convinced most people who are taking this poll, have they convinced them that Joe Biden is the victim or is Donald Trump the victim? Who's getting the most beat up of the presidential candidates. Is it Joe Biden? Do you feel like Joe Biden is being unfairly treated or is it Donald Trump? Now, mind you, they've made it seem like, oh my God, we're seeing from the polling. People are saying, well, Biden is being more affected by misinformation, but is it really misinformation? Because Joe Biden did trip and fall on a flat stage. Yes, there were many excuses on why he tripped and fell on that flat stage, but he did. There was nothing in his way. He did fall up a flight of stairs. He did fall walking down a flight of stairs. 
These are facts. He often, in virtually every speech he has given, makes up entire sections and sentences of words that no one's ever heard of before and often rambles into a direction before he gets back to his main point. Showing this, many people will look at it and go, that just can't be true because we're told President Biden is mentally stable and in good health, even though we're seeing live footage of him not being in mental, mentally stable or in good health, but that's what we're told every other time. So these two ideas don't mesh, which make many people think, well, the facts they have seen can't be true. As was highlighted by Demi on Larry Sharp's program, people are seeing the truth and they believe it's AI because it doesn't match their feelings or the message that they have been told by the mainstream media. The news media wouldn't lie to me, right? And that's what they're doing here. And by the way, it does seem very effective that they have convinced many people who took this poll at that time that Joe Biden has been the victim of memes and misinformation. When we have three years of people going after Donald Trump mercilessly, making up statements about what he did and did not say without any evidence, manipulating his image in many different ways. It's interesting. And this then goes into the next question. How often are you seeing misinformation? I don't think most people even know what misinformation truly is. It is so difficult to define what is misinformation. At one point, in America, if you said uh, receiving a certain mandated medication uh, was not necessarily in the best health interest of everyone, well, you were told that's misinformation. Today, that's confirmed that it may not be good for everyone. You were told that if you didn't wear a mask, well, that would be detrimental to your health and others' health. We now know from the CDC and credible health agencies around the world, well, no, it really has no impact whatsoever. We have seen things that we were told at the moment were true and then found out they weren't. Or things like in terms of Russia collusion, where we had Rachel Maddow for years telling the American people that Donald Trump was guilty of Russia collusion. And then after, after four different investigations, $35 million being spent, including investigation by the Democrats, it wasn't true. It was all a fabrication. In fact, the people who were guilty of trying to perpetrate a lie on the American people was the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC. Oh, but that was when the story died and no one wanted to talk about it anymore. But yet that misinformation still exists today and people often repeat it. Donald Trump never told people to go home on January 6th. A lie. Okay, there's a lot of misinformation, misquoted information attributed to Donald Trump and that's okay and that continues to exist because it is approved by the mainstream media. But God forbid you actually... You point to the truth of what Joe Biden has done and said, and well, that just can't be true because the news media didn't say it was true. It wasn't approved already. So I don't think many people know what misinformation is. I know what they may feel is information. And I think that's what this really, this question is really doing is testing how do people feel about the information they are seeing? Some of it may or may not be true, but do they feel like they're being misinformed? Are they accepting the approved message from the mainstream media or not? And that's what I think they're trying to test here. And this may be the most important question in the entire poll. Do you think it is okay? Is it a violation of freedom of speech that if a social media company doesn't like what you have done, that they can remove it. Look at the wording of this question on this poll. Is the removal of fake images and video a violation of the First Amendment of your freedom of speech? Well, what if that fake video, that false image, what if it's meant to be a parody, a comedy, 
What if it's part of a fiction? What if it is part of a narrative, whether it's political or otherwise? What if it's part of entertainment? See, it's not a limited question. There's no limited scope here. They're saying if they don't like something, that anything can fall under this criteria. No matter what category it may be, they may say this is, well, this is in fortifying and protecting the 2024 election. But that's not what the question is saying. It's saying any fake video, any fake image, whether your art may be movies or video or parody or anything, they can remove it. This is what they're really asking about, that they can attack your expression, your creation, is it okay? Will you allow them to censor your speech and your expression and your creation? Will you comply or will you complain? That's what they're really looking. It is probably the most important question in this entire poll, and it is meant to, one, fortify the 2024 election, and two, to see how far the compliance has been drilled into your mind by the intelligentsia and academia. How much will you obey? How subservient are you today through the tools of social media and the social media giants? I think this is devastatingly important. And the truly scary thing about that is 70% of the people who had taken the poll at the time I took it said, no, it's perfectly fine. The social media companies can take it all, can remove anything that they deem as not being approved of not portraying the message that they want for not fortifying the approved messages that have been handed down to them from various political agencies and individuals. 70% said it's okay to destroy the freedom of speech, the freedom to create and express yourself. That's insane. People should be terrified of this. If nothing else, if you clip only one part, if you see one part of the video, you share one part of the video, share this poll question and what I've just said about it. Perhaps the second most important question is the final question of the poll. And they said, Okay, should you be punished for being creative? Should you be punished for expressing your opinion, for sharing a point of view? That's what they're asking here in this question. How dare you see that meme? How dare you watch that video? Especially if you don't know if the video is true or not. They want to punish you for not committing a crime. By the way, it's not a crime to watch a video that has been edited like you do when you watch CNN. It's not a crime to share a video, true or not, to share information like, as an example, talking about the Hunter Biden laptop. It was true. Social media companies wanted to punish you for seeing the truth, and they want now your approval to be able to punish you for a non crime. How dare you see the truth just because they didn't like it? And you should be punished for that. You should be punished for sharing the truth that isn't beneficial to their political agenda. How dare you impede the fortification of an election? You are bad. You haven't broken a law, but you should be punished anyway because laws aren't necessary. Compliance is. This is the second most important question on this entire poll, and that's why the social media companies, I believe, sponsored this poll, in particular Facebook, to see how much they can get away with punishing you for not doing what they want and how far they can push you into compliance. Now, at the end of the poll, we did answer and we said, hey, this doesn't even consider the fact that we could be talking about entertainment, we could be talking about parody, we could be talking about political commentary, and they treat them all equally the same, and they are not. That this is going well beyond the scope of misinformation and going into just the First Amendment and opinion. It's about approved messaging and propaganda and expressing that propaganda, and how dare you debunk that? It's truly terrifying. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you don't. 
But I want you to consider, even if you don't agree with the way I have looked at that YouGov poll, I want you to consider, what if I'm right? Not, I'm not telling you you must agree with me. I'm not a progressive. You don't have to just because I'm black, just because I'm Hispanic. You don't have to agree with me. But I want you to consider, what if I'm right? What if I'm only, even if I'm only partially right, what if I am right? What if they are trying to fortify the 2024 election by punishing people for daring to share ideas and messages and conversations and trying to direct people only to the approved message, which is politically motivated, that has an agenda? What if we are seeing them try to fortify 2024 like they already did in 2020 and they didn't tell you about it then, they're not telling you about it now, but they're trying to see how far they, how much they can get away with, how far they can push you. What if I'm right? That should be the most scary thing about this. Again, the, the problem with AI isn't what's fake. It's what people are made to believe is fake when it was true. That's the problem with AI in 2024. We said it last week. We repeat it now. But we look forward to seeing what you think about this in the comments. No Sound Bites Allowed is a podcast hosted by Michael Vass. The podcast focuses on providing in-depth discussions on various political and social issues. As the title suggests, the aim is to go beyond quick sound bites and explore topics in greater detail. Michael Vass, the host, engages with guests to analyze and discuss current events, policies, and political ideologies. The live stream and videos cover a wide range of subjects, including politics, economics, social issues, and more. By delving into longer, more comprehensive conversations, No Sound Bites Allowed aims to provide listeners with a deeper understanding of the complexities surrounding contemporary issues. AI is listening. Shouldn't you know what AI knows? Aren't you tired of being treated like a child by major media parrots and want to be respected as an adult? There is nothing to lose and a lot to potentially gain, so check out No Sound Bites allowed on all major social media platforms.